Can we make beer from a bag? Okay, we don't make a lot of beer on this channel, but today we're gonna, because a lot of people have asked us to, and you know what? We're gonna do it from a bag. This is Bryce Malt Ingredients Company, um, CBW Golden Light Dry Malt Extract. This is one pound of it. This is our hops editions. A word about the hops editions. Up until this point, I've used Cascade hops in most of our beers, and a funny thing has happened in almost every single one. I always said, I taste grapefruit, I taste grapefruit, I taste grapefruit. And you know why I tasted grapefruit? Because he was using Cascade hops. Because Cascade hops has a grapefruit flavor, and someone finally told me. You can tell that we are really into our beer making around here, right? So we got Williamette hops this time, which does like fruity flavors and hay, which doesn't sound all that attractive, but it sounds more beer-like to me than grapefruit. So we're going with that. But let's get started. So the technique we're gonna be using today is what Brian is calling the concentrated technique. What other people call it, I don't care. That's what I'm calling it. What it basically means is I'm gonna use a pot on a cooktop. If you're at home, you probably wanna use your stove. It'll be a lot easier. And I have a gallon of water. We are making one gallon, by the way. If you wanna make three gallons, just multiply everything by three. If you wanna make five, multiply by five. You know the drill by now. And I'm going to put about a third of this water into the pot. Not all of it, because reasons. I'll get to in just a moment. Eh, it's a little more than a third. And I'm gonna turn that all the way to 11. I wanna get that cranked up and boiling. Now, what I'm doing is you only need about 100 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit to dissolve the dry malt extract, but you have to boil that wort to isomerize the hops. See, I actually did a little bit of research. And apparently, there is an, a method that we were doing where you boil the hops separately and then you add it in. That's not as effective because you want to isomerize the hops in the presence of the sugary wort. I don't know what difference that actually makes, but I did find a reference that said that. So that's how we're gonna do it today. We are gonna do a full one hour boil. I normally don't like that because it's very wasteful, okay? But I'm doing this in a concentrated form. Why? Because I don't have all that fancy cooling equipment. And no, I'm not gonna buy it because I don't make beer that often. But I can cool it by adding that rest of the water after the boil is done, see? And that way we get it down to a one gallon batch size. I'll probably have to add a little bit more water. In the meantime, we just wait for this water to boil. Okay, watching this water in here, I'm thinking, there's only about that much in the bottom of that pot. There's no way that's gonna be good for an hour. So I'm gonna end up using more of this water, probably half of the full gallon, just cause I don't wanna be looking at like caked on burnt mud in the bottom of my pot after an hour. So you can tell I do this oh so often. Okay, so our water is heating up. There's little tiny bubbles coming up. So it's almost ready. Let me explain a little bit about this stuff. Dry malt extract is kind of like liquid malt extract's redheaded stepbrother, okay? It it's gets, dry. Yeah, it gets a bad rap too. It's usually used to up the gravity of a beer that didn't come out to exactly the gravity you wanted it to be, whether you did all grain or another extract. So a lot of people just use it as like a, a buffer, a filler. It's not normally used to make a whole beer, but today it is. Now this is one pound and what I've read is a pound is roughly a 1.040 starting gravity, which will put us to like a four to 5% beer. Pretty respectable, I'm okay with that. Now, I also know something, from cooking, I don't wanna put a powder into a boiling liquid because it's just gonna cake up and get really, really clumpy. So instead, what I'm gonna do is put it in now and I'm gonna mix that through. So the steam already made it stick to the bag. So what does he gotta do? He's gonna thwack the packet. Oh, she got me. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> yeah, it, see, it's just, it's all like, it's gross. That's just not, that's not attractive. All right, so now that all that's in there, I need to stir this up so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. There's no clumping. It actually dissolves really nice. There's, there's no issues. It foamed up slightly on me, but I don't think anything's really like stuck to the bottom. I'm scraping. It smells like wort. It really does from making beer before. That's exactly what the wort smells like. That's pretty cool. So now we are just waiting for this to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we'll start putting in our additions. Now, today I'm gonna to be using a total of six grams. I can put that up in ounces, but it's a really small amount, like a quarter of an ounce, roughly. 
but three additions of two grams each, okay? And one of them goes in at the five minute mark, one of them goes in at the 30 minute mark, and one of them goes in just before you kill the heat at 60 minutes. This is pretty much boiling at this point. You want just a nice rolling boil. You don't want like that violent overpowering boil because you're just gonna boil off all your water. If you're curious as why there's three editions of the same product, it's because the extraction of each creates a different layer. So the first one is gonna be your bittering. The second one is going to be your flavoring. And your third one is going to be for aroma. You remembered all that or did you look it up just recently? No, I remembered it. Wow, because I almost had it backwards. I was gonna say <laughs> the opposite, but that's, that's correct, yeah. So yeah, the first one is just for bittering and I'm gonna put it in now. A couple minutes isn't gonna make that much difference. I know there's probably people out there right now that are hating on us because that is not the way you make beer. Beer can't be made that way. Well, can't is not a word that I like to use because you certainly can. Will this be the best beer ever? I'm gonna bet probably not. <laughs> Look at what we're using. I just wanna know, can you make a halfway decent beer from a bag? That's it, because you know what? We happen to have that stuff lying around. So we said, hey, let's make a beer with it. And that's, that's exactly where we're at. So that was our first edition. We're gonna wait about 25 more minutes let this boil some more, then we're gonna put in our second edition. Be back with you then. Okay, we're at the half hour mark. That means one more addition, two grams of hops. In, stir. See in half an hour. Okay, so we're coming up on the last addition time, all right? Something I wanna bring up though is the amount of hops used. When I went researching recipes and looking into things, you can use everything from like half an ounce to like 20 ounces in a five gallon batch. We're making a one gallon batch, so I had to tone that down. It seemed like three ounces to five ounces was the norm if you like hops, less than that if you don't. We are not real hop heads. So I went with the equivalent of one ounce for a five gallon batch. That's where I came up with the six grams. It's, it's roughly the same concept. It's a little bit more than that, but I figured that was a pretty good happy medium. But uh, I'm gonna put our last addition in now, stir that through and cut the heat. That's how fast I do it. I know some people will let that last one go for a full five minutes. I didn't want to go that long. I'm gonna take it off the heat and put it right there. And now comes the cooling part of the show. But first I want to get this out of my way because I just see me doing this and hurting myself really badly. And while some people might enjoy that, I won't. So we're not gonna do it. For the cooling part of this, you could put this in like an ice bath or something. I'm just literally gonna pour the rest of the water in there and then my lovely assistant slash business partner slash life partner here is gonna mix that through. It sounds so unintimate to say life partner. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're my wife. You're, it's just weird. I'm the partner of your life. Yeah, yeah. I guess when you say it like that, it makes sense. I just, I don't know, when it, the way I said it came off awkward. And this is making it even more awkward. <laughs> so what I wanna do now is grab my thermometer that I did actually sanitize just the tip. So let me stick that in there and get a temp. The reason you don't want this to be too hot is because, well. It's bad for yeast. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit warm, 142 degrees. But you know what we can do? We can either wait, because it needs to be below 120. We can either wait or we can put this in a bathtub or something like that. You do want to cool it quickly because the longer this stays open to the air, the more likely an infection could occur. And even like what I was talking right over it, that's probably not the best thing to do. So I should be like this. Do your social distancing thing. I'm joking more or less, but it is sort of true. Um, Cause what we want to do next is filter this out. We want to get the hops pellets out of there and get it into a fermenter so that we can add our yeast. Be back when this is cool enough. We opted for the sink method, where you put it in the sink, you put some water in there, and it cools down. It took like 10 minutes, no big deal. You can use ice if you really want to, but there's no need. I got it down to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Totally acceptable, because I know I'm probably gonna have to add a little bit more water to this anyway. But the next step is there's all this gooky, nasty hops remnants in here. Sludge. Yeah, I don't want that in my beer. So I'm gonna filter it. The way I'm gonna do that 
So we're going to pour it through a brew bag into this pitcher. This will also give me a measurement of how much we have, so it serves a dual purpose. This is the tricky part, where I probably make a mess. All right, here we go. Not a drop. Love it when a plan comes together. Now, I don't want to squeeze this, because this is not the greatest bag in the world, and I don't want some of that sludge getting in there. So I'm just going to let it drip drain, which hopefully won't take too much longer, because I know this isn't probably the most exciting thing you could be watching on YouTube right now. Okay, that took a minute or two to drain, and then I took the liberty of refilling it with some water to put it back up to roughly the one gallon mark. But you know what? Let's take a reading before we get it into the pitcher. Because, you know, why not, right? Do you want to stir it up a little bit um, since you just added that water? Good idea. You can use it. I'm going to use the hydrometer. <laughs> By the way, everything that we're using was sanitized in... The red bucket of sanitization. She's doing that to change it up and throw you guys off. But yeah, you want to sanitize all of your stuff, especially in beer making and cider making, which are lower ABV. Um, they are more prone to infections than other styles of brewing like meads and wines. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't just leave the hydrometer in there. It's because our hydrometer is taller than the amount of wort, so it wouldn't have, wouldn't have given me an appropriate reading. It wouldn't have gone as far down as I need to go. Our target's something like a 1.040. Now, what I know is that dry malt extract is roughly 40 points per pound per gallon, but is it exactly? <laughs> that we don't know. Well, whoever wrote 1.040 for a pound needs to rewrite it, because 1.042. I'm gonna go with that. That's pretty good. 1.042 works for me. It's gonna give us like a 4.7 or so percent ABV in the end. It's all good, nothing to worry about. However, I'm gonna want a funnel to pour it into there correctly. I am just gonna pour this right in. At this point, we don't have to worry about oxidation, okay? Because you actually wanna get some air in here. So I'll show you a trick on how I'm gonna aerate this in a minute. All right, so I got a funnel and it was sanitized. So I'm gonna take from this and pour it in here. I probably could have done it right from this pitcher because it has that great spout. And yes, you should get this pitcher. Seriously, you need this pitcher. It's awesome. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, we have an Amazon affiliate link in the description for it. Which we I'm do. saying it because, yeah, which we do. But I'm saying it because it's actually an amazing pitcher. It's really, really good. But yeah, there's a link in the description if you want to get one for yourself and join the Cool Kids Club like we have. Okay, so I only fill this halfway for a reason. I'm gonna put my thumb saver bung, which is just a solid bung, okay? It doesn't have a hole in it. And I'm going to apply some pressure and I'm going to shake the bejesus out. But what I'm in fact doing is not mixing this. Well, I am, but I'm mixing it with air, okay? We're trying to get some oxygen in there because your yeast, when it first starts a brew, wants that oxygen so that they can uh, get busy with it and form a big colony, a nice healthy colony for your brew. And of course, it makes foam, it's just the way it is. But that's enough. I think I'm good. Um, I could probably do more. Okay, we got it all in. Lots of foam, but we got it all in. Next, yeast. I'm going to be using Safe Ale SO4. It comes in one of those plastic foil packages that you gotta use scissors to open up. Should be able to just tear it. Just saying. And I would normally use a whole packet, but mm, that's overkill for this. We don't really need it. So I'm just going to eyeball roughly half and try to keep it off the sides if possible. So needless to say, there will be no packet thwacking today. One of these makes five to six gallons. So even using half is probably more than we really need, but it'll start up nice and clean. It'll do the job. What do you do with this? This goes in the fridge. What I generally do is I fold it up so that it's nice and airtight, and then I'll put a piece of tape on it, and then it goes into the fridge, keeping it cold. This will last months until we decide to use it again. Now, before I put the airlock on, I do want to get that yeast mixed in a little bit. It's just sitting on the foam right now. So I'm just gonna kind of use the swirl method a little and get it in there. The foam is a pain. However, it's just part of it. I mean, there's, there's not much you can do about it. It's just, I hate it. We have our airlock and stopper. I'm just gonna put that in there. And then all that's left is to take some notes and put it on the fermenter. Now, my notes are beer from a bag, because that's what we're calling this one. One pound dry malt extract, two, no, wait, three, two gram additions of Williamette hops, 
Water to a gallon, half a packet of US-04, started on June 1st, 2022, and the original gravity was 1.042. That's it. This is gonna sit for probably a week or two, and we'll be back to show you how it's doing. So we made beer from a bag, and looks like it's ready to bottle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a reading on this first and make sure it's really done. Right, so this was seven days of fermentation so far, but it was really done after like four. And um, that's how beers can be sometimes. They can go really, really fast. Let's see where we stopped at here. Looks like exactly at 1.010, which is pretty typical for beer. There's always a little bit of unfermentable sugars in a beer, as I understand it. I'm sure someone knows the exact technical way of doing that, but for us, that's enough. I just need to know that. The next step is we're going to get this from here into the pitcher and we're gonna prime it for bottling because it's done, it's ready to go. So it's time to rack. As always, when racking, we use an auto siphon. If you don't have an auto siphon, I suggest you get one. They are very convenient. And this one was $17 on Amazon. We do have links in the description below for some of this gear. That's in the US. If you're somewhere else, prices may vary. But this one, it's cheap, it works really well. And I priced out the tubing alone to be almost the same as buying the whole thing. And this comes with six feet of tubing. I cut two feet off, so you can use that as a blow off tube. Say that two for one. Anyway, I am leaving the cap on because there is some lees in the bottom here and I don't want that in our bottles. So I'm going about halfway, start it up. By the way, Derek has the other end in a pitcher over there. You probably can't see that, but Wait, it is there. More. I need to start more. All right. Longer too, gotta get used to it. And once that's started, I'm gonna drop it down in there. But yeah, the idea behind racking is we're trying to take it off of the lease get it out of the initial fermenter. And in our case, I wanna put it into a pitcher with a wide mouth so I can stir, because I wanna mix in some sugar. Once you get down to the bottom, you wanna be careful and just lift it up a little bit. I like to do this, puts it on its side, gives a little bit more pressure to that, but you wanna be careful because the lease doesn't always sit nice and flat. Yeah, you don't wanna wiggle it around too much or you'll disturb the lease tape. We did use SO4 in this, which is a great ale yeast for that flocculation. It just compresses right down. There's barely anything and we're gonna have almost no waste. See that goes right to the bottom. And I just pull this out, good to go. Trust me, what's left in there, you don't want to drink, okay? Unless your name is John. <laughs> John, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> does he do that with beer too? I have no idea if he does that with beer. So now we're on to the priming part of the show. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're gonna prime this for a natural carbonation. That means we're going to create a tiny fermentation in each bottle that will add CO2, pressure. And to do that, you need some sugars. Now, there's different ways of doing it. Lots of people use all different sorts of sweeteners to do this. I just use regular table sugar. Is it the absolute best way? Well, maybe, maybe not, that's debatable. But you know what, it's the easiest way and it's convenient. And I know most everybody that watches our show can probably get table sugar. So if you prefer to use something else, that's totally fine. I'm using table sugar. I'm also using a viewer's suggestion. I'm using my one ounce of sugar, which is my suggestion for a gallon, which is 28 grams. And I put that in a little bit of warm water and I'm just mixing this up. I'm making a simple solution, okay? Simple syrup. Simple, yeah, that. Sorry, I'm getting my mix all talked up again. <laughs> and I'm just trying to dissolve all that sugar. It makes it a little bit easier to mix because you know, it was pointed out to me that if I didn't mix it fully in the pitcher, I'm defeating the purpose of what I'm trying to do. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of people use carbonation drops, which is fine, or they use like the half teaspoon or a teaspoon of sugar per bottle method. I don't like that, and here's why. It's a little inconsistent. Um, try measuring out exactly half a teaspoon of sugar 10 times, and then weigh them and see how much different they actually are. You're not getting the exact amount each time. A little too much could make a bottle bomb. A little too little might not make carbonation. So it's best to be as accurate as possible. By distributing this, equal, by distributing this evenly through the entire pitcher of beer, because it is beer now, oh yeah, smells like beer, we have essentially the same volume of it all throughout. Does it lower the ABV ever so slightly by using water? Yeah, do I care? No, come on, you know, this is nothing. If it drops it by one point of gravity, I'm not concerned. Now I did get that dissolved pretty good, so I'm just going to dump this right into our beer and just give it a little bit of a stir because I wanna make sure it gets all through before I start 
bottling. Now, carbonation drops, they are basically just sugar. Um, depending on the carbonation drops you buy, their processing process, their construction process might be very accurate to where they are exactly the same, or they could be slightly different, which means it's the same thing as, well, did you measure half a teaspoon or like five eighths of a teaspoon or three eighths of a, so I just like this method. If you want to use carbonation drops, figure out how many you need, dissolve them in water and throw them into your wort. And you can still do it that way. So there's an option for you. And I just gave this a good mix and good to go. By the way, everything was sanitized, just so you know. Turbos is like right over there, star sand in it, you know, the whole thing. Let me go put these in the sink though. All right, so next we're going to bottle and we have our bottles ready. These are standard 16 ounce brown beer bottles. Do they have to be brown? No. Do they have to be green? No. Can they be clear? Of course. And we are just going to bottle this, which is just racking put into a bottle. So it's called bottling. Don't ask me, I didn't make this stuff up. And I'm going to use a bottling wand, which is just a rod that has a springy thingy on the end. You can call it whatever kind of valve you really want to. It's a springy thingy as far as I'm concerned. I put it about a half inch under the tubing because any more in it won't come back off. I call it a springy thingy because what it does is it allows the liquid to flow when it's pushed in and it allows it to stop when it's not. And I have my cap removed from this side and I put it all the way to the bottom of the pitcher. Give it a few pumps. You hear that, right? We have liquid flowage. That's a technical term. <laughs> now I'll just take over. And what I do is I fill them up to the neck of the bottle, pull the wand out, put it in the next bottle. Derica seals them up and we're good to go. Seven bottles of beer on the table. Seven bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around. Yeah, well, not quite yet. These need to be carbonated. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to go if one of these bottles should happen to fall. That's or... a different song, babe. Is it? Yeah, that's like the monkeys on the back. No, you somewhere. can do that too. You can do the... I have never heard it that way. I, it can be either way. I've heard both. But anyway, these are going to go into our bomb shelter. What's our bomb shelter, you ask? Good question. It is a plastic tote that we got from Lowe's. What You can get one from Home Depot or Amazon or any big box store that you want, really. As long as it's nice and thick, because here's what happens. This is going to pressurize. If there's a chip in the glass, if you happen to put too much sugar in it. If any of a number of things goes wrong, wrong, not do it correctly, it goes wrong, they could explode, okay? We're always a little bit on the cautious side, so we put them in there because eh, I'd rather have them blow up in a plastic tote than, you know, just in the air and make a mess and have flying shards of glass throughout the house. Just sounds less than appetizing to me and, you know, we have cats and people in the house and I really don't want to have to clean up glass out of our cats or people. So we use bomb shelter. But if you do everything correctly, it shouldn't happen. For instance, in all our years of brewing, we have never actually had a bottle bomb. I have had corks pop out. We've had tops want to pop off. And I do think that using these kind of flip top lids does help quite a bit. They will, they're a little more forgiving. Um, they will give out, like the seal will give out before the bottle might. Hopefully, that's the theory anyway. I don't really like to test those kind of things. Basically, we're gonna put labels on these, put them in the bomb shelter, and we'll see you once they carbonate. The time has come. Say fair is fair, pay the rent. Let's taste our beer. Hey, carbonated. That's always a good sign when you hear that, pssst, you know, you know, carbonated. I didn't fake that or anything, that's real. So here we go. It is a very light color, which is to be expected. It was a light golden pale ale type of thing, which is exactly the kind of beer that neither of us really enjoy. So our views may be slightly our expectations are tainted. Low. Yeah. Well, I mean, it came from a bag, okay? This wasn't like whole grain. This wasn't even like liquid malt. This was dry malt extract. Literally one of those powder things, you know? Like how did that come out? Smells like beer. Looks like beer. It's got a decent color. I mean, it's it's fairly clear as beer goes. Beer isn't always crystal clear. It, it foamed up, you know, that's that's always a good thing. Are you ready? No. I'm gonna taste it. <laughs> you know, that's not bad. It's not super rich and flavorful. It actually is far less 
offensive to my senses as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's not half bad. I mean, it it doesn't. See, we're used to like dark beers that are full and rich. Yes. And this is just not that. I mean, it's a pale ale t style of beer. There's a little bit of a hoppy character that isn't unfavorable. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little maltiness coming through. Mm -hmm. Considering how easy, how ridiculously yeah. easy it was to make this. Honestly, on a cold day after mowing the lawn or yeah. being outside, this would be wonderful. Yes, this it would, would be. be. This would be really good. It would be. It totally I, would be. I don't really have a problem with this at all. I, I, don't, I don't either. My expectations were like, oh, this is going to be like a three. Uh, this has far exceeded my expectations. It has mine as well. Keep in mind, this is not the first tasting we did today. The others were meads, which are things that we actually really enjoy. Beer is lower on the list of things that we enjoy. So the fact that we're not hating this is probably a good sign. I've had one beer in my life that I really truly enjoyed. And I can't remember what the heck it was. It was a commercial beer. Wasn't it blueberry or something? It was some sort of fruit beer. I want to think the label was done by the crazy guy that I have uh, no idea. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Who was that? Who was that author? You're asking the wrong person. Oh, man. Somebody will know. Tell us. Didn't he do artwork too? I think he did artwork too, and I think they were all crazy. And I want to think that that style was the label for this beer. And I'm just babbling, but you know, help me out in the comments below. Thank you. Back to this beer though. It's a, uh, okay, as beers go, it's probably middle of the road. Like I wouldn't say it's great. I wouldn't say it's bad. It's, it's middling, it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. A true beer connoisseur might find all kinds of faults. We are definitely not true beer connoisseurs. So in our opinions, I mean, in my opinion, it's okay. I'm not getting a lot of depth. There's not really a lot of complexity to it. More often than not, when I'm enjoying a beer like beverage, it's because it has another note added to it that isn't beer. Be it a fruit or chocolate peanut she butter. She loves the lambics. The lambics are wonderful. Um, so I'm probably going to have to rephrase my previous statement because that was, I don't think that was a Lambic that I, I don't know. I'm going to doubt it. I do like the Lambics. Yeah, Lambic is like the best thing. So this is, this, to me, this is just beer. This yeah, is this is just a standard beer. Beer. But that, it was never meant to be a specific, um, right. you know, expression or a, a super intense uh, craft beer. It was never meant to be that. It was just meant to be. Quick and easy, hey, down and dirty. You like beer? Beer. You like simple beer? You want to make a simple beer? You want to spend no time at all making it? Do this. And I would say, on that, as with that as a result, it was a hundred and ten percent success. Absolutely, this worked beautifully. I'm I'm shocked. I did not expect dry malt extract to make a halfway decent beer. I for sure thought. People just use that to like up a little bit of a percentage of yeah. alcohol we, and to round we things out. We neither admitted it out loud to ourselves, but as we were producing this, we were both thinking, this, this is, gonna be crap. is going to be awful. <laughs> it's going to be bad. <laughs> it is not awful. It's really not. It's quite pleasant, actually. And keep, it, keep in mind, this is from non-beer people. We're not really into beer. So the fact that it's not offending us means, you know, if you like beer, you might actually really, or you might really hate this, actually, now that I'm thinking about it that way. It could go either way. Well, it depends on what type of beer you like, because there's mm -hmm. a very distinct beer segment. So if yeah. you are a true fan of IPAs, for example, and you're not are like a total this. hop head, you're not going to like this, because it's not very Speaking hop heavy. Speaking of that, I think we did the right amount of hops. It's just mm -hmm. perfect. There's a little bit of, a, like, the smell of the hops is in the beer. It's it's not unpleasant. I, I I don't hate the smell of hops. I don't really like too much bitterness from hops. Yeah. The flavor comes through. But there's just a little bit, there's enough bitterness to cut yeah. any it amps residual up, sweetness. It amps up a little bit of the malt, yeah. maltiness, yep. and it cuts the sweetness. Like you said, yep. this doesn't taste overly sweet, even though it was a 1.010 final. And it came out to, with adjustment for the carbonation, which is like a 0.3%, it's a 4.7% beer. So it's it's on the, the lighter side, which means you could just have two or three, you know, however many you like. But uh, honestly, it was like 
so cheap too. Like yeah. the malt extract is so cheap to buy. And it's, we had it for a year before we used it. It's not like we had to use it immediately. We had it for a year. Plus the technique that we used, you didn't need any of the additional equipment, so that lowered the price point as well. Yeah, I mean, we used like, you know, our pasta pot to cook it in. Literally, that's what I used. Like, and we didn't use any of the cooling coils no, or no. any of that we stuff. We just put so, it in the sink. Done. All right, let's put a number on this bad boy. All right, I need, I need to think about it now. Non più dry farfalon amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano. Am I judging this as a beer or as an overall brew? I'm going to judge it based on Derekiness. Your enjoyment. Derekiness. Okay, so on the Derek scale, one means it's absolute crap and she'd throw it away. Ten means it's amazing. Eleven means it's better than amazing. Everything in between is varying levels of ick to awesome. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to base it as it is. I can go with that. I'm just basing it off of what I drink this in enjoyment level for me. All right, one, two, three, five six. Point five. Pretty close. I was tempted to go seven, but then I thought it's a little high. Would I really reach for this over some of the other stuff we've made? Not, not so much. But it is, it's a solid six for me. And the reason why it's a solid six is because I think about it and I go, this is a light pale ale style beer and I'm not hating it. The last time I had a commercial light pale ale, I didn't finish it. Therefore, this tells you something. This is a little bit better than that. And I had that at a Renaissance festival. Sure, I yeah, I, I am agreeing. And it's not even fully cold yet. I wish it was totally cold. I'm agreeing it's with like Brian. Mostly cold. It has a little bit more depth of flavor than most pale ales do in our experience. So I, I, think, I think that's why I'm enjoying it more than most pale ales. Most. It's a richer flavor, but I don't know about depth. It's, well, depth, okay, it's not complex. No, it's not complex. But it's a rich flavor. But it's not just meh. Yeah. It's just it's a, flavor. a skosh above meh. It doesn't taste like a light beer. <laughs> a skosh, a skosh above meh. <laughs> wow, that's 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 high praise that's right there. So that's what that is. Even a 5.5. Now, would I go and say, hey, I want that beer? No, I would not. No. Comma, however, if Brian had made curry, I would go looking for this. Or hot dogs. Or Burr. chili, chili, or anything else. I would put this in chili. That Are you makes me, me think I want to have a beer. I would look for this. Yeah, I mean, here's what this is. This is like the average beer. This is generic beer. Beer is it's beer. <laughs> it's not a style. It's not a, a specialty. It's just beer. Beer. And if you go from that, sorry, it sounds funny to say that, but if you just go from that perspective, there's nothing wrong with this. Yay, beer! Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, I want a beer. Okay, you hand somebody this, they're probably gonna go, oh, that's decent. I made that. They'll be like, oh, wow, that's pretty good. That would be the average person's reaction. Um, I mean, I'll be honest. I've had many commercial beers, like the industry standard beers, that are far below this. This is better than those. True enough. So that says something. Now, compared to Guinness or my porter that I made, no, they're, they're pfft, no, no, no comparison. But we see you, you just saw the bias right there. We like dark, rich beers. Obviously, this isn't going to stay. I can out. see you through this. What yeah. the heck is this? Yeah, if you can see through it, it ain't beer. <laughs> But overall, I'm kind of impressed. I think this is great. For what it is, for the amount of effort involved, for the price point, and the fact that the ingredients are shelf stable basically forever. Oh, sure. Yeah. This is fantastic. So, beer from a bag, success or failure? Absolutely, 100%. Success! As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.